Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene.com, Machine Embroidery Art. In this lesson, I'm going to explain some of the features under the Sewing Attributes pane. Now, if you don't see this pane on your software or you have accidentally closed it out and you can't find it, you go to the View tab and under Attributes, when you click on it, it will reappear along with the color and text attributes in your import pane. Uh, nothing is showing up right now because we haven't selected anything. So I'm going to, I'm just going to bring in a simple little shape. And um, now that it's selected, you'll see two boxes. You see a yellow box and a pink box. Uh, the yellow box has everything to do with the line. It's the line sew. It has, uh, depending on the type of line you have around it, if you had a running stitch, you'll see the options will change, or if you have a, a motif stitch, or uh, whatever you select, the options will change. But let's stick with that zigzag. And then you have the pink region sew, which has everything to do with the fill or the region. If your sewing attributes pane does not look like mine and it looks like this, it's because you're in the beginner's mode. So go ahead and click on to expert mode so that you have all of your options in the sewing attributes pane. I don't know why they have a beginner and expert. I think especially if you're a beginner, you want to be aware of all of your different options so you can start learning and uh, playing around with all these different options. We're going to start with the yellow line sew uh, box and this is um, in a zigzag uh, outline. So we have the option to put it under sewing or uh, we can increase or decrease the width of the zigzag. We can uh, increase or decrease the density of it. And if it were a real, real wide zigzag, uh, and it's not going to, well, that's too much. But anyway, if you had the half stitch, it would pull out. You see how it pulled out some stitches in the areas where the where the uh, curve gets real tight so that all those stitches aren't bunching up there. And let's go ahead and put these. These little houses are your default. So we'll go back to the defaults. Uh, the sharp corners. It's on sharp corners now, but if you wanted them rounded, you could have them rounded. I'm going to take off this uh oh, let's show what it looks like in a running stitch with op options you have. Now with the um, line so you only have the option to uh, increase the run pitch which is just a fancy name for the stitch length of the running stitch or the line so each one of these each one of these stitches are two millimeters apart that is your default and it just goes around once uh, you can increase that and now you see that these running stitches are a lot wider. They're a double of uh, what they were before. Okay, now we've got the region so and uh, also every time you change the whatever the fill is, I don't think that changes it. Uh, but when you go on triple stitch, you're not going to have the option to, to, to go over it twice because it's a triple stitch. Uh, stem stitch, you're going to have some different options and everyone has uh, whatever line you use uh, we'll have a different set of options. In your region sew, you can have under sewing or not. Uh, you can have it medium, dense, or light. Uh, you can change the type of, uh, let's try it down, see what that looks like. See how we get a lot more. Or you can have uh, have really dense under sewing. But let's just have it medium, the default, or none. Okay, gradation. I explained that, everything about that in a different lesson, and this is just where you find it if you want to blend two different colors together. This is where you find it. And go to my lesson on gradation to learn more. And we're not going to put that on there. The direction can be changed uh, with this little circle uh, thing. You just get to eyeball it and sort of put the direction how you want it. Uh, let's put it back to the default. 
or you can enter a number I can put zero degrees and it'll be uh, or I could type in 90 degrees to have it go straight up and down uh, so that's the way you do it there now with this stitch type I want you to look in this box here as I hover over uh, the stitch type this has the edges you see how they're more in like a, a, a we can't see it if I take my mouse off of it but you see how they're squared on the ends and this comes more to a point you just have to see how your design uh, shows out how it looks when you choose whether or not to use that when your design shows out it throws out th these runners to get from one place to the other and uh, you have the option especially if you are having a very light fill and you don't want them to show you can hide them or bury them by uh, changing the running stitch path see now we don't see them uh, this one's almost the same as the other except that uh, it puts it a little bit closer to the edge uh, but sometimes you just want the shortest uh, distance between two objects if you are trying to save stitches or time the step pitch like the run pitch just a fancy name for the stitch length except a step pitch refers to the region so and run pitch refers to the line so uh, the default for a step pitch length is four millimeters and if you want that to be longer uh, because you want a little more sheen a little more loft uh, in your design uh, you can increase that step pitch uh, frequency is just how the stitches line up so let's put it at, I'll just type in 50%. And you see how they all line up. I, I, this is not meeting correctly for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, probably has something to do with the shape of the object and where it starts and stops. Uh, and the pull compensation, as uh, I, I've told you, uh, you need to add on just about anything with a fill or a satin stitch a region because we know that when you sew this out it's going to pull in and it's going to pooch out here so let's give it a little bit of pull compensation about 0.3 millimeters and you notice how uh, the areas where it pulls in uh, it goes out a little bit beyond the uh, line sew uh, outline and it kind of comes in a little bit so uh, that when you sew out, it may look like it's not going to meet perfectly, but it will because it's, it's compensating for where it's going to pooch out and where it's going to pull in. The next thing, let's put all this on default again. The next thing is feathered edge, and you can have uh, both edges feathered or uh, not. Uh, this is usually use more with a manual punch stitch let me draw a quick manual punch and I'm going to start it out with a running stitch and then I'm going to make a curved manual punch so the next one will be my bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom top double click okay so now uh, the feather stitch, I really love to use it when I'm creating animal fur. And you can increase or decrease the amount of feathering that you want, and you can have it on both sides. Let's put it, and let's do the default. But when you open up the little folders, and each, the top and the bottom have their own little folder, you can, there's all kinds of patterns you can choose. And you can see the different uh, effects that some of them have. You can have something like that. Uh, oh, this one looks cool. But anyway, play around with that. There's lots of options there whenever you use a manual. Notice when I uh, change the fill to uh, something else, we'll change it to a uh, programmable fill. 
you get a whole different set of options. Uh, you can still change, uh, do the underselling and the direction and uh, all the, those other options and pull compensation, but you have this envelope and you have all sorts of options for different programmable fills. Also, with your programmable fill, you have the option to, uh, and we'll put maintain aspect ratio, so they both will change. You can make this programmable, programmable fill uh, smaller or larger. The uh, direction, not to be confused with this direction, although they kind of do the same thing, because if you move this to, say, uh, zero, you get a whole different kind of programmable fill. And actually, when you move this one around, it does pretty much the same thing. Well, just play around. It does different things, but I did get it to, yeah, did the same thing as the other one. So play around with that to see it to uh, alter your, your programmable fill fill. And then there's the offset. All I can say about this one is that you have to play around with it to see the different things that it does. Uh, this is one I have not played around with so much. But it, you see how the, the uh, stitches are a little offset. And you can play around with that. It gives you the uh, ability to increase your types of programmable fills even more. I have not had a lot of experience with this base sewing. I guess the best way to explain it is just to show you what it does and what it looks like in realistic preview as opposed to not having it. And that is only available when you are using a programmable fill stitch. So basically what you need to do when you're exploring the sewing attributes tab is to uh, see all the different options that your different uh, fills you see how every fill or region that you change is going to change your options in your pink region so area and I want you all to explore every one of them every one of these uh, options that you have see what they do so that you know where they are and uh, you'll be able to think of ways to use them everyone's different the same as when you change your line sew. Every time you change the line sew, you're going to have different options under your sewing attributes. Uh, so just play around with all of them. You can change the size. Okay, like this has a uh, programmable fill. Well, that's way too large. So we'll have to make that much, much smaller. We'll make it as small as it'll go. How small is that? I think it goes down to five. No, it goes far, further than that. Well, that would be too small, but you get my, my meaning. So play around with that. Uh, I don't want to make a 30 minute video trying to explain every feature. I think you'll figure this out on your own very well. If you have any questions, just send me an email or uh, notice me on my YouTube page.